Sports. We are my sports. We are the wild. Welcome to T-Mobile Tuesday Night Baseball. And welcome to Progressive Field in Cleveland, Ohio, as Fox Sports Ohio presents Cincinnati Reds Baseball. Reds fans are heading to the ballpark tonight, hoping that it'll be a different story from 24 hours ago. When Brian Price was upset after a 7-1 loss, this was his reaction. We haven't done that much this year. That, but that what happened tonight was unacceptable from a from an effort and a, and a mental perspective. That's not the way we play. It's not the, the way we'll play again. Um, and we need a lot better than that. A lot better than that. That's what Brian Price hopes for tonight. Hi, hello, and welcome to Progressive Field, everyone. Along with the crafty left-hander Chris Welch, I'm George Grand. Jim Day will join us momentarily. You know, Brian Price has always been honest. He has always called for accountability to his pitching staff when he was the pitching coach, and he's calling on the same thing for the rest of his club. He sounds like an old-timer, isn't he? Yep. I mean, that's a throwback right there that you probably had your high school coach tell you that from time to time. Look in the mirror and find out who's in there. Well, you know what? The one thing that you can control on the field is your effort – staying in the ball game, and when they were obviously out of the game, he was referring to, you know, not covering first base, not knowing how many outs there are. Those are the kind of things that when coupled with a bad loss really makes your team look bad. The other side of that is, what's the best way to stop a losing streak of yes, only one? It's next day's pitcher, and today's pitcher is a darn good one. Coming up, Johnny Cueto will take the mound. It's Cueto and the Reds against the Cleveland Indians. Coming up on Fox Sports Ohio. Buy your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further. A Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And my Skyline Chili. Feeling good. It's Skyline time. Right, it's looking for a victory here at Progressive Field. It would be their first in 11 games. The 11th game being tonight. Reds and Indians, moments away at Fox Sports Ohio. I'm Jim Day. You heard uh, George talk about Brian Price's comments last night. Day and his team, his head was not game not knowing the outs in the inning not cover space etc 
Well, he followed up today and said uh, he did not back off from his word. He said, hey, we played poorly. And I said we, meaning look at the running game last night. We didn't shut it down. I'm in charge of that. I can do a better job of that. But he said it's a big deal, my comments last night, because... <laughs> It's more uncommon with this team. We had minimal stakes. The head was not into it. He expects that to not happen tonight. And George and Chris, I think he's been learning on the job, and I think he's finally figured out you don't have to have a team meeting to get a message across to your team. You can talk through the media, and I think it worked. We'll see if it happens tonight. Right, J.D., the other side of it is you rely on the veterans on the club to lead the club too, Chris, don't I you? I think that's the biggest thing right there, George. I mean, he really wouldn't need to say anything if you had a core group of veterans that have been around here that are superstar caliber players who lead this team. But you don't have that right here. I mean, this is a team still really searching for its own identity. And you've got different lineups every night. You've got guys out on the disabled list. The one thing you do have, though, is thorough and, and very good uh, consistent pitching from night to night and they're just looking for a way to get that offense going maybe they'll be able to get it going tonight against Josh Tomlin well let's take a look at the lineup that Brian Price will send out today to take on this Indians club your Meyer starting lineup is Billy Hamilton back in the leadoff spot it'll be Jay Bruce batting second Todd Frazier in the number three hole Brian Ludwig will hit cleanup Chris Heisey will follow them Brian Pena a nine game hitting streak coming into tonight Chris Negron will be your second baseman. That'll mean Santiago will play third. That is one through nine, your Meyer starting lineup. And he's been up and down the last couple of years from the majors to the minors. Just back up from Columbus, here's Josh Tomlin. Well, this is his first year back full after having Tommy John surgery a couple of years ago late in the 2012 season. So he's had 14 starts. He's had one complete game. That was nearly a no-hitter. Uh, so he's capable of doing very well. He makes the other team beat you. Look at notice the number of walks. He's only got 10 walks in 86 innings. So he's a guy that is always around the zone. And if you wait too long in the at bat, you're going to find yourself down like you were last night, 0 and 2, 1 and 2, the way that Corey Kluber had the Reds pretty much down all night long. So ready to go to work. In tight is Lonnie Chisenhall at third, three steps onto the grass with the speedy Hamilton stepping in. Santiago. Santana rather the uh, first baseman even with the bag so if you're going to bunt the first base side is the place to do it and there's a first pitch strike you know Billy's story he leads National League rookies and runs batted in multi hit games runs hits doubles triples stolen bases just about every offensive category he's had a banner year and as he goes that's how the Reds go he's been the trigger to this offense since he stepped into the starting lineup at the beginning of this year. This one hit pretty good right field going back as David Murphy has a beat on it though and he'll haul it in. There are a lot of similarities between these two teams. One of them is not defense. The Reds are the best defense in the National League. The Indians are the worst defense in the American League. The Indians 16th in the American League 85 errors on the season. The Reds have committed only 53 of Elias Brantley Murphy across the outfield Chisholm Hall. Jose Ramirez, the shortstop, Kipnis, the second baseman, Santana, the former catcher at first, and Jan Gomes behind the plate. Here's Jay Bruce. He snuck two ground balls for base hits through the left side yesterday, and there's a bunt attempt for another base hit. Chris, he's taking what they're giving him. Well, you're exactly right, George. You know, some of the better swings that Jay has taken the last couple of weeks have been balls that look like they're hitting run type balls, staying right on it, trying to finish that swing, going the other way, being committed to it. They've adjusted their defense. They do overshift on Bruce still, but depending on the situation, with less than two strikes, they'll pinch the left side infielder near third base. Now, with two strikes on him, 0 and 2, they'll move that left side infielder all the way to short. And you talk about why. You know, he's waited, Jay Bruce has waited so long. He said, you know, it's a combination of things. I want base hits. Tito Francona using the switch against him. The other thing is, when I'm at my best, I'm staying tight. I'm going the other way. I'm going through the middle of the infield. And if you're trying to hit the ball to the left side, you have a better tendency to keep that right shoulder in. Two balls, two strikes to the Reds right fielder. He's in at 219 on the season. This one looped to left. Mike Gaviles under it. 
And he'll squeeze it two away. I think that's a great example right there, George, of really not being committed to hit the ball the other way. You can see the front side fly open. A lot of people are sitting at home saying, well, what does it mean when your front side flies open? And if you just take a look at that swing of Jay Bruce right there, that tells you all you need to know. As soon as your front side is gone, the bat speed is gone, his hips are wide open right there, and he's just kind of reaching for the ball. That ball that is on the outer part of the plate, you hit that very late. You hit it right out of the catcher's glove if you're going to put something on it. Here's Todd Frazier speaking of leading the league. He leads National League third baseman in home runs and stolen bases. A 2020 year. At least 20 home runs, 16 stolen bases on the year. So he's got a pretty good year working. And he's been a key to this Reds offense in a season where the Reds have had a roller coaster offensive. Oh, he gets plunked in the hip, the left hip, and he'll march down to first. Last night, Frazier struck out twice. Reached on an error and grounded out twice. So he's on base for the first time in the series. Right on the upper thigh, actually, not even on the hip. Now you talk about first pitch strikes, and it's so important. Last night, I mean, he's been one of the best pitchers in the league and in all of baseball. Corey Kluber was brilliant. He's getting ahead of everybody. Tomlin's really a different story. He doesn't have the stuff to really blow you away, so he's. I mean, he is classified as a nibbler. He wants you to think he's throwing you a strike, but try to keep it out of the middle of the plate. It's a good way to describe him, really, George. I think the other thing you have to keep in mind that he doesn't have a uh, a closing pitch, meaning he can get two strikes on you, and he doesn't have that pitch to put you away, unlike Kluber. Kluber can go to two or three different pitches, fastball, cutter, slider, and get you out on any of those. Tomlin has to really rely on you hitting his pitch and make getting yourself out. You mentioned his surgery and as we so often see these days when you undergo the kind of surgery that he did Tommy John surgery sometimes it takes you two years to come fully back. They really need him to be as good as he can be in this final two month run if they're going to hang in in the central division race. Short lead for Frazier. Down the left field line towards the corner Frazier's on his horse it's a fair ball he rounds second going to third they'll hold him there. It'll be a double for Ryan Ludwig and Ludwig closing in. This will kick away. Will they get it to the plate in time? No, they missed him. They missed him and he's going to be safe. The throw is high. Gomes tried to get it down. And Frazier with a brilliant slide gets the hand on the plate and the Reds get a run. This is the kind of ball that the Indians have been playing kicking the ball around and it's the kind of play that maybe can get the Reds rolling on this night. Well, it really starts with a nonchalant play. Let's start back before that. It starts with a well hit ball by Ryan Ludwig. He continues to swing the bat hard. The relay comes in and they're just going to flip it to the third baseman. No problem, right? Well, how about watching the ball into your glove next time, Lonnie Chisholm Hall? He doesn't do that. The ball gets away from him. They can't get him at the plate and a nice slide right there. And Todd Frazier is able to eat avoid the tag and put a run on the board. How about that? So it's a double and an air on Chisholm Hall and the Reds get a run out of it and lead it one to nothing. The double for Ludwig is the 199th of his career. He's one away from 200 for his career. Puts a smile on Steve Smith's face the third base coach and on Ludwig's face too. Well they're wondering really right now whether Chris Heisey is going to try to drop another bunt down or not. Ludwig can get a big lead because the third base is playing very deep. And really the only guy on the team who will do that with two outs runner a third base drop a bunt down is Chris Heisey. I think everybody that it hits above him in the lineup uh, recognizes that. And you've got to be aware in case he wanted to drive a run in that way. Of course now 0 2 count. No longer an issue. Tomlin working from the stretch. With a runner on third, gets the out, his first strikeout. But the Reds, a hit batter, gets Frazier on, a double and an error, and they lead in one nothing, turning it over to Cueto.
him after a loss yesterday. Well, anytime Johnny Cueto takes the mound, it's good. And here's some memories from the last time the Reds won here. Cueto against the Indians from May 22nd of 2010. He was brilliant that night, and the Reds are hoping for more of that here. Well, he's been awfully good in his career against the Indians, a 3-0 record. This is that happened, you know, four years ago now, when Johnny Cueto. Had a different haircut and was really a different <laughs> pitcher. It's hard even to compare those numbers from back then to days like today because he he's a five pitch pitcher now. Back then he was really a two pitch pitcher. But his last five starts has been outstanding. Four and zero oh against Cleveland. Lifetime he is undefeated. And the Reds have already gotten him a run. He's not used to that. His career record five and zero oh and an ERA of two point one. And here is numbers from this year. His twenty fourth start. In on the hands of Kipnis. There is Kozark. Zach will haul it in for the first out. Let's check your Cleveland Indians lineup for Terry Francona. Francona, the veteran manager in his second year here in Cleveland, manager of the year last year. Kipnis, the leadoff hitter, Avilas bat second. Michael Brantley had another multi hit game yesterday. Carlos Santana, the switch hitter behind him. Lonnie Chisenhall, a home run last night that proved to be the stretch run that. Got the three runs that the Indians needed to take a big lead. Murphy, Gomes, Dickerson, the former Red, and Ramirez. That's your Myers starting lineup for tonight. And here's Mike Avilas in at 248, three homers, 28 knocked in. Avilas in his career, one for three against Cueto. Jams him, popped up, Frazier giving chase, but he'll run out of room. Great to have you with us at Progressive Field. George Grant, Chris Wells, Jim Day, JD will be joining us again shortly. 18,000 last night, looks like maybe even a little bit bigger here tonight. There was rain in and around the downtown Cleveland area today, chance of showers this evening. The Reds and Indians play today, head to Cincinnati to play Wednesday and Thursday. To wrap up their four game interleague series. The Reds trying to win for the first time since 2010 here. And in interleague competition, the Indians have won 45 and the Reds 41. Hit down to third under the glove of Santiago all the way to the corner. Heisey can't flag it down, and it'll be a two base hit for Mike Aviles. Yeah, kind of very curious, really, why they decided to throw that pitch on an 0-2 count. It looks like a changeup down and in. You know, he caught a lot of the play with that. It was just obviously a mistake in the location. But Avila's the way he holds the bat very high like that. He's just showing me that he's he wants to drop the bat head, and he wants something down and down and in is one of his power spots. He's a dead pull hitter, and boy, that ball sounded good coming off his bat. The Indians are trying to come right back after giving up a run here in the first. Talk about the ball sounding good off a of bat, Chris. After watching Brantley in two days of batting practice, he is so impressive, isn't he? When the ball just jumps off his bat, it is an effortless swing. I mean, his swing path is just so efficient. And here is Michael Brantley, 324 on the year, 16 homers, 71 knocked in, his fifth straight multi hit game last night. A couple of runs batted in, and one of the keys to the victory for the Indians last evening. You know the thing about Brantley is that he just doesn't stand up there and have a quick bat and a lot of power. I mean he's smart. He hit the ball the other way last night knowing that's what Alfredo Simon was going to give him. So you just can't go up there and pitch him one way or another especially with a runner in scoring position. Thought that a little high. So did the Indians rooters behind home plate. Your home plate umpire Greg Gibson, Phil Cuzzy at first, Will Little at second, the crew chief Jerry Davis down at third. Ozart holding the runner tight at second. Avilas good speed. Time for our IGS bringing the energy. We told you about four straight multi hit games for Michael Brantley. And since June the 1st, he's got more than anyone else 26 multi hit games. His average has continued to climb, and 
You know, the other part of it, you talk about his swing, you talk about his presence, and there's another presence that you really see this year, Chris, that you've seen evolve over the last couple of years. He's becoming a leader on this club. Well, it's a club looking for a leader. Mm -hmm. He's the right guy at the right time. Jason Giambi, of course, had been the spiritual leader of this club. He's been injured all year long and most likely will retire at the end of the year on the disabled list right now. Yeah, there's more, we've always said it, George. There's more than one leader on a ball club. It usually is spearheaded by one guy, but that one guy has to be willing to accept it, has to have a personality that lends himself to being a leader. It also has to be a darn good player. You can't lead if you're heading 210. That's through. Here comes Bruce charging. Here comes the runner around third. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's going to be cut. They've got the runner at second. They had no shot at the runner at home. Good job by Frazier to cut it. And they get an out out of it. Although the run scores and it's a tie game. Good job by Bruce to hit the cutoff. And Frazier turns it into an out. Well, Jay does the fundamental things defensively as well as any outfielder out there. And I'm not just talking about the Reds. I'm talking about anywhere in the league. And there really is not much of a chance of getting that runner because Brantley hit that ball on the ground and hit the grass and then went through the dirt and then into the outfield grass. By the time Jay got it, it was pretty well slowed down. Yes, the Reds give up a run, but good defense erases a base runner. Here's Santana, the switch hitter from the left side as the Reds will overshift against him. And talking about the leadership on this club, this is an Indians team that it hoped to have Bourne, Swisher, and Giambi in the lineup every day and to be leaders. But Bourne is out with the pulled hamstring. They hope to get him back by the middle of the month. Nick Swisher's had a bad wrist. He's been unavailable the last couple of days, and Terry Francona has not had Giambi either. And as they always say, you can't lead from the tub, right? That's a strike, says Greg Gibson. Three and one. And on the hands popped up, it'll be out of play. Ryan Pena behind the plate today. Started at first base yesterday. He's added so much to this ball club wherever you put him. On the field and off. And he's meshed superbly with Cueto. That's wide for a ball. So that's the first walk issued by Cueto. I check your Ford defensive alignment for the Reds. First in the National League with only 53 errors on the season. Heisey, Hamilton, Bruce, outstanding defensive outfield for the Reds tonight. Santiago's at third. That means Frazier goes to first. Pozart and Chris Negron, your double play combo, and paying you behind the plate. O'Brien, who figured to be the backup catcher and get sporadic catching time with Mezzarocco on the disabled list. He's caught 35 games behind the plate and 26 games now at first. That's a valuable guy. Here's Chisholm Hall. He had the big swing last night, the three run home run that put separation between the Reds and the Indians, separation the Reds could never get back. There have been a lot of disappointments for the Indians, but the two pleasant surprises this guy, Chisholm Hall, the other guy, Brantley. Rowan has it and that'll take care of the runner but a double by Avila's under the glove of Santiago a single by Brantley they've tied this one at one.
talked about Brian Pena and how valuable he's been. And to this Reds team, the numbers tell part of the story. 80 games, 263 average, 15 doubles. He's been outstanding offensively with five homers and 22 knocked in. And defensively, he's plugged a hole every place you put him. Been a valuable pinch hitter. And it starts at first and behind the plate of not giving up anything defensively. He leads it off as we go to the second. Negron and Cozart will follow. Let's revisit, Chris, what we talked about in the pregame show, what we talked about last night in the postgame show, and the Brian Price comments. There's a bloop to the left side about the lack of effort last night. Little things that you see in the dugout, little things that you see on the field sometimes. And how you address that as a manager you've been I mean you've been around so many different kinds of managers <laughs> both as a player and as a broadcaster and there really is no right or wrong way did he go yes he went but the ball kicks away and he'll reach first base. So it's a strikeout in a wild pitch and pain you reaches. There really is no right or wrong way, is there? The ball actually hit in front of the plate right there. That's one reason why Jan Gomes never really had much of a chance. It looked like it took a wacky hop on him. And as that ball was skirting toward the backstop, that's when the home plate umpire looked down the third and said, did he go, Jerry Davis? And as soon as Davis rung up Brian Pena, Pena takes off the first base. Now the Reds get a base runner as a gift. And here's Chris Negron. I think one of the keys of that for Brian Price and he recognizes that Brian's a smart guy and, and he's been counseled by a lot of managers. He's been around a lot of different managers too is to say your piece not make it overblown mm -hmm. because it happens. You know you play a lot of games out there and sometimes guys go into a mental fog or they have a little hiccup and that's just the way things go. So I, I think you can make too much of it and it becomes an issue. Loop to center that'll drop in front of Brantley and Pena will stop at second. But Chris has a base hit, two on, no one out, and here comes Cozart. I'll tell you, the ball comes off his bat really nice. Nick Grove. We saw him a lot in spring training, hitting the ball the other way like that, right center field. In fact, he's got his power, but Alley might be right center field. That's where he got his first ever home run, a three run homer. And give the Reds credit down at double A and triple A the last couple of years. I mean, they played him all over, all over the infield and the outfield. So realizing if he was going to be a value here at the major league level, it would be as a fill in player. And he's comfortable at all those positions. Here's Cozart. Do you sacrifice? They're showing Bunt, and he fouls it off. Well, you wouldn't normally sacrifice in a National League game, but since you've got a DH in the lineup, no pitcher hitting, you've got a regular everyday player. In the number nine slot right here, Ramon Santiago. Gomes flashes his signs. Tomlin from the stretch. Bozart shows punt again, gets it down. They'll go to third and they'll get the out. Well, two problems with that play. Number one, you've got the catcher running at second base. Number two, it's a force play. So that bunt laid down by Zach Cozart, if it is not right down the third base line, that pitcher, right hander, is coming over there. I mean, Tomlin gets himself in a pretty good position to field anyway. And he jumped on that. He's very athletic. And that was just uh, not anywhere close to being a good enough bunt to move him over. So it's up to Santiago to try to get a run in. Grown down at second and Cozart down at first. Now this hit pretty good to right. Going back. Oh. Guess what? Ramon. That's gone. Ramon Santiago drills one to right from the unlikeliest of spots. The Reds get a big three run bolt and lead it four to one. Watch the greeting he's going to get when he hits the dugout.
Well, you talk about a pick me up right there. I'm sure that everybody in that dugout was thinking, man, we just tried to sacrifice. It didn't work. Same old, same old. And then Ramon runs into a first pitch fastball. And bye bye, honey pie. I like that. <laughs> Save that video for him, too. <laughs> Does that sound good or what? No doubter, you're right. 4 1 Reds, a three run homer, the first of the year for Ramon. <laughs> Great smile, huh? Rip but foul. Billy flied to right first time up. And that'll take care of Hamilton. So, strikeout for out number two. And that'll bring up Jay Bruce. Does it just about on schedule once a year? And a home run about a year ago in August when he was a member of the Tigers. August the 16th of 2013, and here we are. He's got another one. How about that? He sneaks it right into the teeth of the shift and sneaks it in between the shortstop and the second baseman for a base hit. So Bruce is on. Two away, and here comes Frazier. A couple of hits last night. Both of those hits last night to the left of the second base bag. This time he gets it to the right of the bag. And little by little, I think Jay Bruce coming around a little bit. Get that confidence going. Get some other guys in the lineup swinging the bats. Get healthy again. Bullet up the middle, but knocked down by the pitcher Tomlin in the oh. dirt. And they get the out. But a once a year wonder Ramon sings this one into the seats and the Reds lead it four to one a three run shot. Serious injuries, Paul 1 out in Elk, Ohio. A consecutive interleague series won at home. The Indians have had a staggered interleague history, but in terms of consecutive interleague series won at home, they've won seven. The A's six, the Tigers four, the Angels and Yankees two each. 
Well, the Indians have been very tough here at home, and the Reds know full well that story. They haven't won a game here since 2010 when Johnny Cueto was on the mound. Here's David Murphy lines this one foul down the right field line. Murphy last night had a, a double, one for two, hit by a pitch, and also walked. What a game he had Sunday. He had a big hit in the ninth inning down to his final strike, a homer to tie the game, and then Brantley won the game in the twelfth with another home run. Solid player, good defensive player, and against right-handers will give you good at bats as well. He's in a 262, seven homers, 53 knocked in. Waves at that one, and there's strikeout number one for Johnny. Well, it's been a while since Johnny's been given four runs in support. And he's got to feel like he's on top of the world right there. Drops a little change up on the left handed hitting Daniel Murphy. And, you know, Cueto's going to throw stuff up there that most pitchers just don't throw. And he's got good command of all of his pitches too. He really has about five different pitches when you start counting the different types of fastballs that he throws, cutters, changeups. The John Gomes in a 283, 15 homers, 48 knocked in. And in a league that has some pretty good offensive catchers, here's your question Who's first? In home runs and extra base hits. Well, this guy is first in home runs and he's second in extra base hits. That's how good he's been offensively for the Indians. Nice play by Negron, the second baseman. Gomes is retired, two away. Now, the old adage, Jay Bell says it, Chris. Freddie Benavides says it. If you're a shortstop, you can play anywhere. And Negron grew up as a shortstop, signed as a shortstop, and he looks comfortable every place you put him defensively. That guy right there was a darn good shortstop. In fact, Jay Bell, his first major league at bat came for the Indians against future Hall of Famer Burt Blylevin. And not only did he homer on his first at bat, he homered on the first pitch he ever saw. One of only a handful of players to do that. Against a guy that he was traded for. Mm hmm The flying Dutchman. And now a Hall of Famer. And at some point in time, you expect Jay Bell to be a manager too. Down to first, but foul. There was a time you knew he had the ability and you knew he had the intelligence. You wondered whether he would want to do it to spend time away from his family. And now, as he and Laura's kids have gotten older and are moving out of the house, you see that on his radar, don't you? Well, you do, but you really don't spend any more time as a manager than you do as a coach. These guys are out here at noon every day. That's a nice play. Outstanding. Two fine plays by Negron. One, two, three for Cueto. Here we go to the third. Ludwig, how is he paying you do up? Johnny's got a three run lead.
Dollar winners with MLB.com's easy and free game. Beat the streak. Pick players to get hits in 57 straight games, and you could become a millionaire. Play MLB.com. Beat the streak today. There's Ludwig. He doubled in the first after Frazier was hit by a pitch. That sent Frazier to third, and then on the relay throw, it bounced off the glove of Chisenhall. He was charged with an error. That allowed Frazier to streak home and score the Reds' first run. Reds led it 1 0, Indians tied it at 1, and then in the second, a three run home run from Ramon Santiago has given the Reds a 4 to 1 lead. Great to have you with us, George Grand, Chris Wells, Jim Day, JD will be by shortly. He's a little logy today. We had great luncheon today with our compadres from the Indians from Sports Time Ohio and other than Jesse I think JD uh, cleaned up pretty good. He had at least a couple of stakes. He's a veteran. I mean he, he knows how to do it. He'll take advantage of that three stake. No doubt about it. Man we want to say thanks to our friends at Sports Time Ohio and we had a great lunch of today. Tom Farmer, our executive producer, and Bob Pennell, our coordinating producer. Getting everybody together and darn good steaks and chicken. I think I, think I saw JD putting a couple in his back pocket when we left, too. He lines his pocket with Ziploc bags ahead uh -huh. of time. It, it, he's a veteran. Swing and a miss. Ludwig's retired. First out of the third. Three pretty good sliders right there after Ludwig got a first pitch fastball that he saw from Tom on his last time that he rocketed for a double. He really saw nothing that he could swing at that didn't have a little break on it. One away, here's Heisey struck out to end the first. Rest of our crew with us again tonight. Josh Hall, our producer, Roy Alfers, our director, Matt Sigafus, dialing up some highlights, Lauren White. Keeping us up to date on everything. So we're gonna miss by Heisey. Now I know Jesse Jackson's taking the bus back tonight. And I know he had probably, you probably made a couple of sandwiches while you were there, didn't you? <laughs> Carries his briefcase, makes us think he's carrying papers <laughs> in it, right? Jesse <laughs> Jake. <laughs> Reds leave town tonight, so do the Indians fly down to Cincinnati. We play Wednesday and Thursday at home. Mike Latos, Matt Latos against Danny Salazar, and then Homer Bailey against TJ House on Wednesday and Thursday games before. Miami comes in for the weekend, our Hall of Fame weekend in Cincinnati. 2 2. The Indians had a festive weekend this last weekend, unveiling a statue of Jim Tomey in the outfield. That's a high ball four. Reds have a run around with one out, and here comes Pena. Hey, now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag OhioFanPhoto for a chance to have it shown at an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by ATNT. We'll have our fan photo of the night coming up later. You now, Chris, it's interesting you talked about you know, leadership on a club. When the Indians unveiled the statue of Tome, and Jim came with his family and a lot of former Indians came back and the, the ceremony went on as planned everything went fine and in the middle of the day in the Indians clubhouse of course Tommy wore number 25 that's the number that Jason Giambi has been wearing and he called the Indians front office and you know, they were well aware the statue was coming out and they had never indicated they were going to retire the number and then what did Giambi do. He took his uniform off, signed it, sent it over to Tommy, saying, "There's a statue of Big Jim." Saying you graced this uniform number; it should be yours, and no one else should ever wear it. And he changed his number. That's a leader. Yep. Good guy, Jason Jambi. Yep. 
One ball, no strikes. Came back very strong, George, from all the allegations of performance enhancing yeah. drugs that he was involved with. I mean, you know, you're always tarnished a little bit, probably forever, but you know, oftentimes how you handle it depends how oftentimes how quickly people will forget and forgive. There goes the runner. It's fouled off by Pena. On the one one count. And this of course is the one year anniversary when all the. Drug suspensions came down a year ago. For that the was for the biogenesis. Yep for the biogenesis and then today. More. Arrests were made. And there are indications that there may be some other major league players. And professional baseball players who. Have been involved in the newest investigation. Yeah, I tell you, that the one thing that it'll linger for a long time. But the one thing that, and you know, Chris, you went to New York and you saw you around Yankee Stadium with Derek Jeter. Here's the one-one from Tomlin. Runner not going. That's a strike. At least Derek Jeter gets to go out this year without the whole A-Rod thing hanging over. Him. Mm -hmm. You know, if he had, if he had come back. Did you imagine what a circus that would be all year long? So Jeter can say goodbye. And if A Rod comes back next year, fine. If he doesn't, that's fine too. But Jeter's year isn't tarnished by that. One ball, two strikes. Well, if Major League Baseball had spent a tenth of the effort back in the early 90s to cut the Performance enhancing drug craze before it got out of hand in baseball. We wouldn't be talking about it right now. Yep. I mean, they've spent a lot of assets, a lot of money at this biogenesis in order to, to try to just nail a couple more extra players who, if they are violating the drug policy now, they're just downright stupid. Because there are too many tests. There are there are people in the clubhouse nearly on a daily basis. Collecting samples and sending them in. I mean, uh, to think that you're going to get away with anything now is just ridiculous. One ball, two strikes. And that's wide, two two. There never will be a perfect world. The bad guys are always going to be ahead of the good guys, and it's always going to be catch up. But yeah, but if you know, for, if, if, if you get a whole generation of young players, amateur players that are not used to knowing that there's something out there that can help them, mm -hmm. then that's where you're going to have a clean game. Just wide will go full 3 2. Now the Reds are working Tomlin pretty good. They're not chasing a lot of pitches that you call teaser pitches just off the plate, making him throw strikes. He just doesn't have enough on his fastball to make you commit too early. You can kind of wait back and be selective here. See if Brian Price sends the runner 3 2. One out here in the third. Runner going down to first smothered. It's a tag play and they won't even make a throw. So they get the out at first and sending the runner prevents what could have been a double play ending the inning. And you know we, we talked about Price's comments about J.D. You're down there by the Reds dugout. We alluded to his comments about lack of effort last night and he also commented on himself didn't he. He did. He talked about the running game and the, the fact that he's in charge of it. And they didn't do a good job of controlling the running game. So he said, I'm just as much guilty as anyone else. I'm the leader. I'm accountable for this team. And my team's head was not in the game. Put it on me. Put it on all of us. Well, showing some aggressiveness there on the 3 2 with one out. And that avoids the double play. I'm not so sure with the way that Corey Kluber threw the ball last <laughs> night. You could have had everybody standing on top of the dugout and it wouldn't have made a whole lot of difference. I mean, once you gave him a couple of runs with which to work, it was pretty much mail it on in. But you do want to see some intensity. There's Negron singled the center in the second inning, started the Reds offensive rally culminated by a home run a three run shot from Santiago. And conversely, it'll be interesting to see how the Indians react tonight. I mean, Kluver was is the ace of the Indian staff. Here you got Johnny Cueto, the ace and one of the best pitchers in the league on the mound, given four runs with which to work. We'll see 
how hard the Indians battle back or whether they think that this is a mountain just too tough to climb. O2 to Negron. Line to center. Will it hold up? And Brantley will get there. Hit right on the button by Negron, but Brantley playing shallow hauls it in. Reds lead it four to one. Ramirez leads it when we return. Reaction to the possibility of winning the Ohio Cup between these two teams. Fox Sports Live's Donovan McNabb says how he thinks Andy Dalton can live up to his new contract. Plus, the Blue Jackets are trading in their skates for bikes. Get complete coverage of all of today's action involving Ohio sports at FoxSportsOhio.com. Brought to you by 1 800 Safe Auto Drive Safe Spend Less. There's Ramirez to lead it off, the shortstop. Jose in 190, no homers, two knocked in. In addition to the injuries that the Indians have had, they traded a Struble Cabrera, their former shortstop, to Washington. He's now playing second for the Nationals. No Ramirez getting a chance to show what he can do. Ramirez in the top of the order, Kipton Senavilas. I mentioned the Indians. How they would react after last night's effort. That's it. Hard in the right, a base hit for Ramirez. So a leadoff batter on here in the third. Terry Francona before the game said simply, We got a special performance last night, and tonight we're going against your guy that gives you a special performance every time out. It makes managing a whole lot easier when you got a Kluber performance or Cueto out there, huh? Well, you know, on the Reds case, they've got five guys in their rotation that pretty much give you a consistent effort every time out. So that's one of the things that Brian Price hasn't had to fret about that Terry Francona has had hanging over his head the entire season. I mean, they've run nine different pitchers out there so far for the Indians uh, to be in their starting rotation. Guys that they're shoveling or shuttling back and forth from Triple A, like they just called up Tomlin tonight from Triple A to start this ball game. Here's Kip. This popped a short first time up on the stretch is Cueto. There's a strike. And baseball being an everyday sport, I mean, you talk about. The NFL and, and other sports where you play once a week or a couple of times a week. How you handle the team and uh, Terry Francona has proven it, especially in his years in Boston, how he's been able to put the foot on the pedal when you have to and take the foot off the pedal when you need to. And it takes years. I mean, you Terry has admitted, he said, you know, when I first got my first job in Philadelphia I was no I thought I was ready to manage but I wasn't I made a lot of mistakes that was a team that wasn't expected to win when he got to Boston he was with a team that was expected to win 
And Brian Price is learning on the job. No matter how good you think you are when you take over your first managerial job, you're going to be better the second year, the third year, the fourth year. Well, you're only going to be as good as your players. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may be better as a manager individually handling situations, dealing with players, dealing with the front office, the press, and so on. But bottom line is the talent that you got on the field. And you can't fool anybody into thinking you've got talent when you don't over when you play 162 games. One ball, two strikes. Got him. Well, you see this reaction a lot when Johnny Cueto pitches, don't you? Look where that is. That number four right there is where that pitch is, and you can't dial it up any better than that. Held for an extra moment right there. Kipna still doesn't believe it's a strike, but he'll go back and look at it on video and say, man, that Cueto. Not only does he hit the black, he hits the outside of the black. Here's Avilas. Mike doubled his first time up and scored on a base hit by Brantley. One away. Santiago at third, a step closer to the line and a step closer to the bag. Middle of the infield, double play depth. to play today in the National League Milwaukee a one game lead over the Cardinals Pittsburgh a game and a half back and the Reds five back Reds at 56 and 56 at 500 going into play tonight the Indians with their win last night moved to within five and a half of the Tigers Kansas City four and a half back. Pretty good lead down there. He's stolen as many as 35 in the minor leagues. Got some speed, so you can't forget about it. Well, right now, he's the guy on the platform. Uh, they're taking a look at Ramirez this year. He's only 21 years old. Their best prospect in the minor leagues is also a shortstop, Francisco Lindor, who's from Puerto Rico. And they don't think that he'll be up this year. They want to give an extended look to. Ramirez, but it's nice to know that they've got two middle infielders that can really handle it defensively, and they hope that somewhere down the road could hit some, hit some little up here in the major leagues as well. One ball, two strikes. Fouled off, held on to by Pena. That's strikeout number three for Cueto, and that'll bring up Brantley. Well, no off speed pitch down around the knees this time for Mike Avila, so they're just going to go high heat. And when you've got a guy holding the bat straight up and down with his elbows as high as Avila does, he, he's begging you to throw the ball down in the zone where you can just drop the bat head on it. Instead, a four seamer upstairs at 93 is our flamethrower tonight. Brought to you, of course, by Cholula Hot Sauce. You ought to get Johnny a contract with Cholula. You're not kidding. <laughs> it's a marriage made in heaven, isn't it? <laughs> Big swing by Brantley to the left side, curving. It'll be out of play. Now, this is the second gear that we see Johnny Clayton have, and not all pitchers have. Have that, that you, you can rear back and dial it up there a few more miles an hour. I never forget that Robin Roberts once told me in college, all you got to do is you get in trouble is you rear back and add a few miles to your <laughs> fastball. And not everybody can do that. In fact, very few pitchers, maybe a handful in the entire game of baseball right now, could do that. Cueto is one of those guys that has that second gear, and he's going to go to that second gear here against Michael Brantley. Easier for a Hall of Famer to say that, huh? Yeah, well, that's <laughs> one reason why he's a Hall of Famer. And I mean, often that's all he'd use for the first five or six innings, mm -hmm. right? 
Maybe that's one of the reasons why a lot of those pitchers never had elbow problems. You're right about that. No balls, two strikes to Brantley. Singled in a run his first time up. The short takes a big high hop right to Cozart, and that'll do it. A leadoff hit, nothing to show for it. Reds go back to work. Cozart leads it off. Reds lead 4-1. An early introduction of the Reds Hall of Fame class of 2014, which includes three hometown players, plus get a tour of the best baseball Hall of Fame this side of Cooperstown. That's the Reds Hall of Fame. Plus, if you missed it, the young lady turned in our Reds Moment of the Week. That and more on Reds Weekly tomorrow at 6 o'clock, just before Reds Live. Hope you join us for Reds Weekly. Great to. Follow the Reds. We hope you follow us every night. But if you want to recap and get behind the scenes, Ron Melanor, Rod Overberg, Matt Coiner, always behind the scenes doing so much work for a great show. Jeff Pecoro anchors it for us, and everyone contributes to it. In fact, Matt Coiner is going to be on the case early tomorrow, the news conference, the Great American Ballpark to unveil the logo tomorrow morning, and he'll be there to bring it to you. We'll have that tomorrow on Reds Live. and. That just starts a tremendous week. All of the Major League Baseball people who are so much an integral part of putting together the All Star festivities. There's Tomlin to Cozart. This hit pretty good to left center field. Looking up, going back. It's off the top of the wall. Cozart will round second. He kicks all the way back to center field, and he's going to wind up with a three base hit. How about that? Both players converged on it and it took a crazy bounce off the top of the wall past both outfielders and Cozart winds up at third. Well, Zach puts a good swing on this and boy what a difference a night makes as far as facing the pitching that they did last night compared to the locations that they're seeing from Josh Tomlin tonight. Good swing by Cozart and with both outfielders standing right there at the edge of the warning track you kind of set yourself up for what turned out to be a bad bounce beneficial to the Reds. Infield in for the Indians and here's Santiago is three run home run in the second gave the Reds a four to one lead. All in a strike. Gets the start at third tonight. His 12th start at third. Also started at second and at short this year. 
That's down and away. In fact, overall, he's had 10 starts at second and 10 starts at short. Two one. Great play by Kipnis. That'll save a run. A two hopper that Kipnis just did get a glove on. Cozart held his ground for the first out of the inning. And he's still at third. Well, the Reds had already decided ahead of time they were not going to play the contact play. That means you're going to run on as soon as the ball has hit the bat. With nobody out, that doesn't make any sense. Santiago hit it well, but it was a good, nice defensive play to keep him at third base so far. There's Mickey Calloway, the pitching coach. Coming out to check on his right hander. Unlikely with no outs, more likely with one out that they would play contact here. Look, Cozart's still on third, and here's Hamilton. And the other side of it is, even with the infield where it is, uh, Billy Bunt here could get the run in too. Hamilton flyed out, struck out 0 for 2. Smith, third base coach's box for the Reds. He flashes some signs to Hamilton. Billy Hatcher down in the first base box for the Reds. That's a broken bat, just foul down the right field line. Mind giving up the bat for a base hit, but gives it up for a foul ball down the right field line. Hey, don't forget you can catch Fox Sports Ohio's coverage of the Reds during this whole season with MLB.tv Premium, number one live streaming sports service celebrating 12 years. Watch every out of market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit Reds.com for details. Here's the one, two. Ah, somebody on third, nobody out. Now Cozart's still sitting there, but two away. Got to figure that was coming for Billy Hamilton because Josh Tomlin doesn't have the fastball that represents his strikeout pitch. His best strikeout pitch to a left-hander is that big overhand curveball. He throws it in a good spot. Billy comes up empty, and now it'll take a base hit. Five strikeouts for Tomlin, and here's Bruce. They fly to left and single to right. Even less of a shift now than yeah. ever before for Jay Bruce. They've had four different shifts against Bruce. This time, on the first pitch at least, the shortstop Ramirez is still on the shortstop side of the second base bag. And Kipnis in light in right field. Strike one and one. The numbers for Jay last three games five hits. And of those five three of them have been against the shift the opposite way.
Miss it inside two and one. Wonder if maybe Tomlin would pitch around Jay Bruce here after a 3 1 count, but ironically, he handles left handers at least from a batting average standpoint better than he does right handers, mainly because that off speed stuff is a little bit more effective. 3 1. And we'll go full 3 2. That was the mandatory cut fastball right there. He's got to rely on movement. Three two two outs. Bozart who led off with a triple still sitting at third. Dribble to the right side with the infield back. Bruce will beat it out and the Reds get a run. <laughs> How about that. There are a lot of different ways to beat the shift. This isn't the one you normally draw up, but it worked just fine as you see the shortstop Ramirez coming from a long way over. I mean, he almost needs a bare hand. That ball is still bobbling around in his glove as Bruce is running up the right field line. Been that kind of night. The Reds have had a big swing and a couple of small swings. Add it all up, they lead it five to one. Here's Frazier hit by a pitch and robbed of a hit on a bullet right back through the middle of the infield that Tomlin knocked down and threw him out for the final out of the second inning. Now Chris in the days we had Ryan Friel he was our bet to be the first to get his uni dirty <laughs> by the second inning Frazier's got that now doesn't he <laughs> yeah he does every night same He's story just the kind of player he is yep <laughs> his mom wore so many unis that looked like that <laughs> <laughs> for so many years and was happy to do it yeah. now happy that somebody else is still washing <laughs> you're not kidding Rick Stowe's looking at that saying what am I going to be doing tomorrow morning when I get home. <laughs> what is poor Josh going to be doing Rick Stowe's yeah, not doing it. That's right. <laughs> Looped into center Brandley's there. He's got it. But the Reds get a run. A lead off triple translates into a run. The Reds lead at 5-1.
See that it's setting up to be another dog fight down the stretch. Milwaukee one game clear of St. Louis. Pittsburgh one and a half games back and Cincinnati still hanging in there at 500. But the Pittsburgh Pirates are going to have to do without the reigning MVP Andrew McCutcheon for at least a short period of time. First of all, I got Bean right on the spine by D-backs Randall Delgado. And the injury that they announced today, most people thought that it was that, but it was not. It was actually this one a day later, a swing he made on a sacrifice fly. Now, he was diagnosed now. Stick. Here, this is a medical term. Avulsion involving the castrochondral cartilage of the left 11th rib. A portion of the bone basically chipped away, and it also involves the cartilage. But the weird thing is he's going to remain on the active roster. They're hoping that he can come back miraculously in two weeks period of time. But the trainer says it's worse because it's on his left side. It affects his hitting and his throwing. So we'll see what happens. Uh, either way, they're going to be without their reigning MVP. A big blow for the Pirates. Big swing by Santana to the warning track. Bruce has it one away here in the fourth. And no one wants to see any star player injured. And if you're a general manager... Nobody wants in a pennant race to lose a player. And if you're going to lose one, you hope it's early in the season. And the Reds have had the full gamut of it this year. Eight on the disabled list to start the year. And as we hit August, Brandon Phillips and Joey Votto still on the DL. Well, it seems like injuries are the, the common problem here in the National League Central. Maybe all over baseball, but even more so in the Central because you're more attuned to those teams. The Pirates have lost a lot of pitching to the DL, so have the St. Louis Cardinals. And it's the Brewers who are on top who have stayed fairly injury free until recently. Of course, Matt Garza went on the DL with a side injury. So that's why you think at this point it's still wide open. Negron has it. Chisholm Hall is retired two away. I mean, as, as poorly as the Reds have come out of the All Star break and as poor as their record is, and they're at 500 right now, they still are only five games out. And if they can get some people back, continue to pitch the way they're pitching, no reason to believe that. And I know that Brian Price and Jay Bell believe it, that in August. In, August and September and especially when you've got 16 of the last 19 in the division against the contenders. This is still winnable. Strike one to Murphy who struck out his first time up. When you look at the four teams involved in the central, each team, each of the other three teams have had a long stretch where they played very well. The Reds had a short stretch where they played well, but they haven't put together that one stretch where they played to where you thought they would be. Mm -hmm. And if you get that stretch rolling, good reason to feel pretty good about yourself. Here's the one, two. Popped up left side. Cozart has it measured. Six straight retired by Cueto. Reds lead it 5 1.
Ohio, Cincinnati Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio being brought to you by JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together by Toyota. Over 30 Toyota offers. You want them? Well, visit buyatoyota.com. Go for the save on Wing Tuesdays at B-Dubs with especially priced wings all day long. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, and Sports. And by T-Mobile Tuesday Night Baseball. Great to have you with us. George Grant, Chris Welch, Jim Day, and our whole crew here for game two of the four games between these two teams this week in the battle for Ohio. The Reds lose last night 7-1 to one to the Indians here in Cleveland tonight. They lead 5-1 to one in Wednesday and Thursday games back home in Cincinnati against the same Indians team. Here's Ryan Ludwig. Takes strike one. Ludwig tonight. Doubled in the first. And that eventually plated the first run for the Reds. He doubled after Frazier was hit by a pitch. Frazier stopped at third and when the relay bounced off the glove of Chisenhall, Frazier scampered home and the Reds let it one nothing. Next time up, Ludwig struck out. So he's one for two. The double was his 199th of his career. He's had a good week, Chris. Uh, he drove in some key runs down in that Miami series. Mr. Riz went down there and took three out of four from the Marlins. They're really on the verge of sweeping that four game set. They'd like to get out of here tonight, obviously, with a win to break it half and half with this two game set in Cleveland. Josh Tomlin's got Ludwig thinking about that outside corner. Murphy has it out number one here in the fifth. That'll bring up High Z who struck out and walked. Chisholm Hall and in the left, a base hit for Heisey. So he's on for the second time. And that'll bring Pena to the plate. Well, always a good high fastball hitter. The interesting thing about Chris Heisey this year is that he's hitting about 110 points lower when he starts than when he comes in off the bench as a pinch hitter. And he's getting some extended looks now, right now. And this is an opportunity for Heisey to kind of cement himself in uh, as somebody that the Reds can lean on going down the stretch. If Brian Price puts the running game to use here, Pena to the plate, Heisey good speed down at first. Pena struck out but reached on a wild pitch by Tomlin in the second. That was followed by a Negron single and then the homer by Santiago to make it 4-1 Reds. And then Pena bounced to first, the second time up. Pena peers down at Steve Smith, who rolls through his signs, and then checks the infielders who are at double play depth. Tomlin, pretty concise move from the mound. That's a straight.
Kamal is not an easy guy to steal on. I mean, his normal times to, to home are about 1.16, 1.19. With a slide step, he gets it down around 0.9. And those are excellent times, very compact. So the Reds aren't really looking to steal anything right here. If they do anything, it'll be a hit and run type. Of course, you don't do that with two strikes. Two from Tomlin. That's through into right, a base hit. Heisey takes a big turn. He'll head to third, and it'll be first and third for the Reds. Well, one of those nights for the Reds where they're getting those ground balls, they're finding the holes, they're runners from first to third. They're kind of keeping the line going, and they've had some activity in the Indians' bullpen for quite a while. And that slow walk by Terry Francona tells you one thing. Josh Tomlin's night is done. 82 pitches on the night. They'll take the ball from his 29 year old right hander. And while the pitching change takes place, they'll take time out for these messages. Time for our Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. You're watching Reds baseball in Fox Sports Ohio. Descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Welcome back to Progressive Field in Cleveland, Ohio. The Reds five runs, nine hits, no errors, four left on base. The Indians are run, three hits, one error, two left on base. Here's Chris Negron who so far has delivered a base hit and a line drive to center, one for two. And here's Carlos Carrasco, the new right hander for the Indians after Tomlin goes four plus innings. The runner on first, the runner on third, his responsibility already five runs charged to him. There's been a bullpen that's been pretty good for the Indians. One of the strong points of this club this year. They've been solid all season long. Carrasco, Axford, Scott Atchison have been big time from the right side, Chris. Here goes the runner. Here comes a swing. They'll hold the runner and they'll get a run out of it. Pena will be retired, but they get a run out of it to make it. 6 1 Cincinnati. On a double steal, that's a play that really should not work in the major leagues. Not when everybody around the infield has strong enough arms to throw. Perfectly executed by Chris Heisey at third base. So Heisey scores, and uh, it'll be a caught stealing for the Indians, but 
the Reds get a run out of it and lead it six to one. I mean, it's like the Indians never even thought the Reds would consider doing that. Uh, I'm stunned that they played it like that. This Indians defense, man, they could use some help. Well, that'll do the inning, but the Reds get a run and lead it six one. The game stick around for a special on field ceremony honoring more than 20 Reds legends and a post game fireworks show presented by Cooper tires for tickets to this great weekend call 513 381 Reds visit select Kroger locations or Reds.com slash tickets excited about this weekend Chris boy it's always it's always great when you bring back old time Reds and you honor the history and tradition of the Reds organization. Here's Gomes fouls it off for strike one. Well, this even may be more special than others because they're honoring three guys who you know, grew up and played baseball, yep. amateur baseball in Cincinnati, and it's such a hotbed for amateur baseball. So it's nice to see that happen. And of course, you bring guys back from the big red machine era and even beyond that. And it's just it's a good weekend. I don't think anybody puts on a party better than the Castellinis and the Reds. And I'm looking forward to that. Gala on Sunday night, of course the induction ceremony on Saturday, but festivities all weekend long. I don't know that I've ever seen a more impressive player on the field than Dave Parker. I mean, he did intimidating, that's for sure. Oh, offensively, defensively, he drove the train for every team he played for and in every game he played in. Ken Griffey Jr. One of the most exciting players of this era and heading on to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And I don't think we ever saw a better competitor than Ronnie Oster. I mean, nobody was grittier and tougher than Ronnie O. You're right about that. Man. Talk about players who get injured and their careers are over. I mean, Oster, after his knee injury and what he went through to come back and be as good as he was for as long as he was. And what an outstanding instructor. I remember when when Ronnie and Billy Doran started to tutor Pokey Reese when they were taking Pokey, moving him from short to second. And the, Ronnie said to Pokey, said, Pokey, you got something that none of us ever had. You got a shortstop's arm as a second baseman. Use it. Don't just think you're just any other second baseman. And he played second different than most second basemen because he had that he arm. Sure did. Very similar to Brandon Phillips, who took a shortstop's arm to second. Swing and a miss. Gomes retired. Strikeout for Johnny Cueto. That is strikeout number four for Cueto. Really amazes me how different Johnny Cueto can pitch and be successful at all the attempts to do that. 
I mean, if he wants to, he can dial up change ups and sliders and keep the ball down around the knees. Or if he wants to, he can just rear back and play good old fashioned four seam fastball, and he can do that too. Because Chris Dickerson mounts the second his first time up 0 for 1. Hitting in the eighth spot in the lineup as the designated hitter tonight. Talking to the former Red before the game. Happy to be in the lineup. I said, You're in there tonight. He said, Yeah, the good news, I'm in there. The bad news, I get to face Mario Soto's <laughs> <laughs> protege. <laughs> and a lot of guys say that, huh? <laughs> And Mario was the guy that always told Johnny Cueto, don't forget about your changeup. I mean, Mario, the guy who was the king of the two pitches, the fastball and the changeup, and had one of the best changeups in all of baseball through his whole career. Every time Johnny gets out of whack, Mario dials him up. Two balls, two strikes. to check it can't do it that strike out number five for Johnny two away and here's Ramirez the number nine hitter hey Reds fan cam is back Friday at the Holy Grail when the Reds host the Marlins it's your chance to answer Reds trivia with great prizes maybe be a part of our Reds live post game show join us Friday at six be part of the fun Is Ramirez singled to lead off the third, but was left stranded after Cueto struck out Kipnis and Avilas and got Brantley to bounce out. Come in, went way in, and hits Ramirez. So a two out base runner, and that'll go to the top of the order. Jason Kipnis, unhappy with himself. Guido will stalk around the mound. Now that was a cutter that just kept cutting, and no harm to Ramirez right there, but that is the ninth hit batter of the year for Johnny Cueto. You know, kind of an oddity, statistically anyway, that Johnny Cueto has hit nine batters but has not thrown one wild pitch. So when he's wild, he's wild east and west and not north and south. And it shows you he's pitching inside. Don Gullett had the great line show me a pitcher that doesn't pitch inside I'll show you a pitcher that doesn't win up here right. That holds true for whatever generation in which you're pitching. And two balls no strike so. Out will come Pena and Santiago will come from third uh, Johnny obviously. Upset after hitting Ramirez, and they'll quiet him down a little bit. Get him back into playing. Two o to Kipnis. Short lead for Ramirez. 
And misses down low. Now that is only the second three ball count in the entire ball game for Cueto. Bounce back full 3 2. And the other part of the evolution of Cueto, Chris, as we watch him this year as compared to other years, how much more rapidly he does work. Remember, he used to stalk around the mound a lot. I think a lot of that has to do with confidence, and it also has to do with the fact that he realizes after being around a long time, talking to infielders, talking to other pitching coaches, that you get better plays made behind you when you get it and go. 3 2 2 away runner Ramirez will be off from first. Nub to the right side. Cueto will cover. They'll get the out and that'll do it. So Johnny bounces back after 3 and 0 oh and a hit batter. To get out of the inning. Reds still lead it 6 1. Cincinnati jumped off to a one nothing lead in the first after Frazier was hit by a pitch Ludwig bangs a double into left field and when the ball glances off Chisinau's glove chased Frazier home Frazier scores and the Reds lead at one nothing Indians then tied it at one and then how about this Ramon Santiago after a base hit and a strikeout wild pitch this home run is first of the year makes it 4 1 Cincinnati Jay Bruce adds a run in the fourth after a triple by Cozart. His dribbler down the first baseline results in a base hit 5 1 Reds. And then on this double steal attempt, Heisey trots home. They'll tag out Payne and the Reds get another run. The lead at 6 1. So added up the Reds six runs, eight hits, no errors. The Indians a run, three hits, and an error. Josh Tomlin chased from the game. And for Johnny Cueto, it's business as usual as he's allowed only three hits. 6 1 Cincinnati, and here's Cozart, who led off the fourth with the triple and later scored on the base hit by Bruce. Carlos Carrasco's second inning of work. The right hander delivers a breaking ball. Cozart's retired for the first out of the Sixth inning. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to our Miller Time moment that'll come up later in the broadcast. Beautiful night as it's turned out. Some rain in and around the Cleveland area, and this has been a once again, Chris, we've been here on the roller coaster ride of northern Ohio. 
There's Ramon who homered his first time up his first homer of the year the three runs batted in give him 10 for the season. A part of that roller coaster ride George was a time when the Indians would outdraw anybody in baseball. They had that continuous sellout streak that I think that were rivaled only by the Colorado Rockies. They were back and forth as to who could have the most continuous sellouts. But now unfortunately coming into this series they were the only team in baseball about at least in the American League that had not drawn at least a million fans to the ball game part. And I think they've overcome that here in this series so far but still it's a far cry from what it used to be here in Cleveland when people would come out of the suburbs and fill this stadium early party it was a raucous time. It's been blooped into center long run for Brantley but he'll get there in two away and it'll be the second out of the inning. Now the other part of that picture for the Cleveland is one of not just baseball but football and basketball too. the LeBron James economy when LeBron was here everything became alive again in downtown Cleveland when he left and we've seen it in the last few years in and around the ballpark some of the restaurants and shops that were open had closed and now they're bouncing back again and with LeBron coming back with Johnny Manziel in as the quarterback of the future for the Indians there's and you know the other part of it too they've got the Republican National Convention coming here in 2016 two new hotels in and around where we are and the also in Columbus this week they're visiting for the possibility of the Democratic Convention coming to Columbus there's a liner into center that'll drop in for a hit so Billy Hamilton is on base for the first time after a fly ball out and two strikeouts two out base hit for Billy. I think things are on the upswing here in Cleveland and talking to Indians fans who are on their way down to Cincinnati they're looking forward some of them hadn't been to Cincinnati in seven eight nine years they're looking forward to the rebirth around the ballpark the banks and everything else around Fountain Square with the all star game coming in next year it's going to be an exciting time here in Cleveland Columbus has the NHL all star game this coming winter and the Reds have the baseball all star game come next summer. Here's Jay fly it out single to right and reached on an infield hit to knock in the fifth run. by the first baseman Santana they'll get the out at first and that'll end the inning so the Reds get a base hit nothing to show for it they still lead it 6 1.
Ohio fan photo. Here's tonight's fan photo of the game brought to you by AT&T. How about that? Johnny be good. It's been great to see so many Reds fans up here in Cleveland for the Red Series. Yeah, it's a shame, Chris. The, the, you know, this used to be a three-game series, and the ideal scenario, I think, for these two cities would be a three-game series one weekend in Cleveland, another three-game series in another weekend in Cincinnati. It would mean a lot to both ball clubs because you know that it pretty well packed the place for both series. Well, so. they do draw more. There's no question about it. And I think there's a lot of fans that travel to each city because they like each ballpark. Fun to see so many Reds fans up here. Mike Gavilas flies out to center. Hamilton has it one away and here comes Brantley singled in the first and bounced out in the third is single in the first plated the lone run for the Indians to tie the game at one. And I, I get the feeling George walking around town and talking to you know people from Cleveland that they have finally forgiven Sam Weish. <laughs> For comments made <laughs> during a Browns Bengals game. <laughs> Took a while, but you know, they've kind of put it on the back burner now. I tell you, you, you talk about coaches and, and players who get credit for different things. I, I've, you know, and I mean, I know in, in my ESPN years getting to know coaches, a hard hit ball down to short, Cozart has it. I don't think anybody's ever given him, you know, they talk about the West Coast offense. I mean, really, he's the guy that should get credit for making it work. I mean, it's one thing about popularizing it and make it work it from a standpoint of, of a game plan. But he was so far ahead of the game, and I'm amazed that he hasn't gotten the chance to coach again for a team that could win in the NFL. But he and he and Tommy made a great pair. Great broadcast pair. Always entertaining to, to watch a game when they would do it. You're right. High ball to left. Uh, Johnny sure is good on this night. A quick one, two, three in the sixth inning. Head into the seventh. Frazier will lead it off. Reds lead six one. As the Yankees face Michael Brantley and these very own Indian Indians in the Bronx, followed by the Cardinals taking on the Orioles. Coverage begins Saturday at 12:30 Eastern, only on Fox Sports One, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. I'm Jim Day. Let's give you some Corky love, as in Corky Miller. He's been a beloved member of the Reds organization for many, many years, and so loved in Louisville that they announced that they are going to retire his number as a Louisville bat on Corky Miller night, August 31st. And Corky Miller certainly deserves this because this is a guy that has certainly 
been embraced by the fans has certainly been a gamer as you will a throwback player holds some Louisville bats records including the three there you see seasons games and doubles top five in those other stats you're looking at the bobblehead that they had earlier of Corky Miller and the Reds have said all along that once his playing days are over that a place in the organization is his if they want it he has not played since May he has already started that journey and guys you know Corky Miller well don't be surprised if he's in this Reds dugout in some capacity someday. Hey KD we all add up our favorite players in our careers here you know, you know Chris you and I've been together for 23 years there's a ground ball wide a third Chisholm Hall has it. It's wide but they'll tag Frazier for the out. Frazier's retired first out. Where do you rank him in terms of your favorite player JD. Oh he's definitely in the top <laughs> ten and I use a line from his often which when he hear, hears players up here at the big league level complain about this or complain about that he says hey if you don't like it play worse go down there and ride the buses for a while in the minor leagues I don't want to hear about it so I use that a lot in many facets of life if you don't like it well then do your job worse etc. And he definitely will be a coach maybe someday a manager he's got that ability doesn't he Chris. Well he does and he's got a good rapport and, and he's just a guy that looks like a ball player mm -hmm. I mean he looks like he fell out of the 1869 red stockings. But he knows a lot about baseball, knows a lot about catching, knows a lot about pitching by being a longtime catcher. And every manager that's had him through the minor leagues, especially in recent years, Jim Riggleman and Rick Sweet, I mean, it's been, he's been a player coach in essence, and he's tutored so many of the catchers that have come through. Devin Mezzarocco is one of them now, you know, Tucker Barnhart, another who swear by the help that he's given them every step along the road. Great teammate. No balls, two strikes to Ludwig. A double, a strikeout, and a fly ball to right. And he got it. Two away here in the seventh. Second strikeout for Carrasco, and that'll bring up Chris Heisey. on that 96 mile an hour fastball for strike one. Pirates have gone ahead in their game two to one in the seventh inning and the third Cardinals in Boston are scoreless. And Milwaukee leads San Francisco 2 0 in the fourth. Updating the scoreboard for you here. The Reds, six runs, nine hits, no errors. Behind Johnny Cueto, who's allowed only a run and three hits. Isaac strikeout walk and a single. This time he'll be retired by Santana. And the Reds go quietly in the seventh. To the bottom of seven we go. Reds still lead at 6 1.
Live presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. Hope you tune in tomorrow. Jeff Picoro, Brian Giesenslaw, J.D., Jim Day will be there and they'll have installment number one of our previews of the Hall of Fame weekend. They'll take a look at the career of Ken Griffey Jr. as he heads to the Reds Hall of Fame and then Cooperstown to follow. And the probables for tomorrow, Matt Latos will go for the Reds looking for his fourth win. Well, Latos will take the mound and he'll face Danny Salazar will go for win number five and on Thursday it's Homer Bailey against T.J. House. They'll join us for Reds Live tomorrow. Well here. Johnny Cueto is a lot of run on three hits. Facing Lonnie Chisenhall. Chisenhall bounced to second twice. Second straight batter he's gone three and oh on he did it to Santana as the final batter of the sixth inning but battled back to three two and then got him to ground out for the final out of the inning. Three one. And that's ball four. Cueto issued a walk in the first and this is his second walk of the evening. Hey, you got to see it live when your Reds take on the Cleveland Indians Wednesday and Thursday at Great American Ballpark. Wednesday, the first 25,000 fans receive a J. Bruce bobblehead presented by the Ohio Lottery. For tickets, call 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger locations or reds.com slash tickets. Right on cue for J. who's finally coming out of his hitting doldrums of late. Hey, he's getting a couple of good breaks along with actually making better contact looking better in the on in the in the batter's box Jordan you made a comment off the air between innings about you know that gives him more confidence when you get a couple of good breaks you get an infield hit here and a boot there. Pass Frazier in the right that's a base hit so it's first and third with nobody out here in the seventh. For those leadoff walks, they just something they do something to the energy of an inning, uh, even different than a leadoff base hit. The good news for the Reds is that the Indians are now down to the bottom part of the order, and Johnny Cueto has handled just about everybody down there except the number nine hitter Ramirez. That's a message right there from Pena. Huh? He's getting him back in. Well, he's taking control. Yep. And Brian has caught Johnny the majority of the games that they have that Quato has been out there this year. I mean, Mazzarocco has caught him a couple of times. Tucker Barnhart caught him once early in the year, did a great job when he did, but his main man has been Brian Pena. So the Reds will keep the infield back at double play depth, try to turn two as Gomes will come to the plate. Jan bounced to second and struck out. Misses on the outside corner. Chris Dickerson on deck, the designated hitter. On the corner for a strike, one and one. Now here's the gear that we're talking about. I think one of the first times in tonight's ball game that Plato has touched 95. So he's reaching back for a little something extra. And ahead in the count one and two. That is really an acquired skill. You know, he's always had a good arm. It's always been a plus arm. And a lot of times a kid comes up from the minor leagues and he's pitching at 100% effort all the time. But when you can pitch at 90% and then dial it up when you need it, that's when you've got something special. Right field, Bruce on his horse to the warning track. Won't get there. It's off the bottom of the wall. There's another ball on the field. It'll be a double, a run will score and they've got the runner caught off third and they got him they nail him at third a toot plan and you know what he's pointing to the ball out in center field saying I thought that was a baseball out there 
There was a ball that came out of the stands as that ball was being thrown in by Jay Bruce. And whether it was an Indians fan or a Reds fan or no fan. Oh, that was. It has affected the game by throwing that ball in and fooling the, the runner. Take I don't another think they're gonna, I'm not going to give him any sympathy. Watch as the ball hits the bottom of the wall and you'll see a ball come flying out of the stands right about now. See it at the top of your screen. It there, yeah. And it came in all the way to center field. They don't get the runner at second, but the runner at third, thinking that the extra ball had gotten away from the cutoff man. And Murphy will be nailed going back into second. Take it. Take another look. See the ball come right about now from the fans in the bullpen area. Actually, can Let's see it. I mean, could that have come from the bullpen itself? Was it a a throw that might have gone over the maybe the catcher? Off the, off the ball hit hard down to second. There's your second out of the inning, and we'll take another look. See if we can see it. It was from the bullpen area. Could it have been a a warm up pitch that either bounced or glanced off a glove in the bullpen area? I mean, bizarre. And you can't fault Murphy. I mean. He thought it was a it was the ball rolling away. Now watch the bullpen area. You're going to see the catcher jump up, and there he goes. And it is. Oh, yeah. That was a wild pitch out of the bullpen. So the Very Reds, odd. The Reds get the benefit of that. Come to the ballpark, you wow. see something new <laughs> every time. Every single come. time. Unbelievable. They get an out out of it, so now two outs, a runner at third, and it's a 6 2 game. Here's a looping fly ball to right. So the Reds get the benefit of a warm up pitch that winds up on the field. The fans here not liking the eventual call. Anyways, Reds lead at 6 2. And the guys, of course, here in Cleveland, Jeff Pecoro, Brian Giesenslaw, have their set trekked up here and all ready to go for Reds Live post game. And they'll bring you the story of this one. Here's another look. Jay Bruce is trying to figure out, <laughs> telling everybody exactly what happened. He had an idea. None of the fans did, and none of the people on the field did. <laughs> you see everything in a different light about that. Don Long giving everybody a play by play of exactly what happened. <laughs> it's been one of those nights, Chris, but the, I think the Reds needed it after last night, huh? Well, they could use some good breaks. There's no question. And I mean, a lot of times between winning and losing a ball game is you get to some good breaks. 
or some really good pitching and they've gotten great pitching tonight the Indians got great pitching last night pretty much well like you would expect coming into this series looking at the matchups of pitchers the first two nights. There's Brian Pena. Pena struck out but reached on a wild pitch by Tomlin bounced to first on a 3 2 pitch in the third and single to right in the fifth. His single part of a rally that produced the Reds sixth run in that fifth inning. If you joined us late Red scored in the first Frazier hit by a pitch Ludwig doubled. And then when the relay throw bounced off the glove of Chisinau for an error. Frazier alertly ran home to make it one nothing Cincinnati Brantley's RBI tied it one one in the bottom of the first. And then the Reds got the big swing of the night last night it was a three run home run from Lonnie Chisenhall that gave the Indian space here in the second it was a the strikeout of Pena and the wild pitch he reached Negron singled and then Ramon Santiago his first homer of the year made it four to one a three run shot the Reds added an RBI by Bruce to make it five one in the fourth and a double steal that produced a run in the fifth. So Pena reaches on a walk to start the eighth inning and here comes Negron. Been a good night for Chris. Chris. A couple of good defensive plays and two hard hit balls one single and one line drive to center. That's a strike. I think the league is still trying to figure out Christopher Negron too, but he's 28 years old, and what he's figured out is that he likes life at the major league level, like everybody does, willing to play anywhere, anytime. Great kid, works hard, always has a smile on his face. Now I think he's shown some people now this time through the league that you know, he's got a little bit of pop in his bat, not home run power, but. You know, a little more power than you think that you get from a lot of middle infielders. Ball on a strike. Not that time. Kipnis on the Ramirez, but the speed of Negron averts the double play. So a four to six fielder's choice, and Negron is on. Well, that's another one of these plays. Uh, we've talked about the Indians' defense, and, you know, I know that they. they Turn this about as well as they possibly can, but that's a DP ball right there. That is DP laying all the way. Kipnis has got to charge that ball to make sure he gets it to the shortstop in time to be able to turn a double play. Terry Francona has seen a whole bunch of that. Plays that not, aren't necessarily errors, but they're plays that should have been made that didn't get made. The error tonight, the 86 of the season that the Indians have committed, first half of the year, they were averaging an error a ball game. And they're just under that. But that's they're the worst defensive team in the American League. The Reds the best defensive team in the National League. One ball to Cozart. Who bounced out, tripled, and struck out. Gibson barks out a strike call as Carrasco in his third full inning of work now coming on for Josh Tomlin. Towards the hole that'll go through Cozart has a two hit night a triple and a single. And that'll bring up the hitting star of the night for the Reds, Ramon Santiago, his first homer, a ground ball out and a fly ball out. Isn't it kind of funny though? I mean, really, we're going to take a look at the home run by Ramon Santiago, and it was a no doubter right there. First pitch he sees, belt high, belts it all the way out of here, and he's usually smiling all the time. I'm surprised <laughs> he's not grinning ear to ear on that one. Well, did they give him a welcome? Didn't he? He gave you the 
I've been there before trot too. It's been a while since the Reds have hit a home run, hasn't it? Sure had none in this series down in Florida. They have one in Florida? I think they had one. Yeah. For Santiago. They had one, it'd be easy to remember. <laughs> For Santiago has been a while too. His first since August the 16th of last year. Right on schedule. One a year. Two on one out. Broken bat down to second. They'll get the out at second and that's all it'll be first and third. I hope that wasn't the home run bat. That may be on its way to Cooperstown already anyways. Back to the top of the order. Here's Billy Hamilton. Hamilton singled his last time up. A one for four night so far. First time tonight, it's starting to sprinkle here at Progressive Field. There was heavy rain in parts of the downtown area earlier today, and a threat of a shower or two tonight. And all of a sudden, it's the skies have opened up to the rain here in the eighth inning. Strike one to Hamilton. And it's 0 2. Got him, and that'll do it. The Reds clinging to a 6 2 lead go to the bottom of the eighth. Top of the order due up. John Morrell hot dog play of the night. Chris Negron, not one but two fine defensive plays on this night. Uh, outstanding defensive play there. He hauls it in and gets the speedy Chris Dickerson down at first. Our John Morrell hot dog play of the game. Good night for Negron. Good night for the Reds so far. 6 2 lead. Johnny Cueto. With the lead delivering his 99th pitch of the evening. 
Jason Kipnis, the leadoff hitter. Kipnis tonight. Popped up, struck out, grounded out 0 for 3. And we told you Terry Francona's comments after the great pitching performance last night from Corey Kluber. And he knew here's a looping fly ball over his high Z. He'll haul it in one away. He slipped. Might have been the wet turf. Just before he made his cut, he slipped but kept his feet. But it makes a big difference, Chris, when you got a Johnny Cueto coming up after a night like last night. Oh, you're right. I mean, it, when Johnny Cueto takes the mound, you don't think you're going to win. You know you're going to win. You know that you're going to be in the ball game anyway. And even if you just spot him one run, sometimes he's able to make that stand up like it's ten runs. Here's Mike Aviles doubled and scored in the first struck out and flied out. I mean Cueto comes into this ball game. He leads the National League in quality starts. He's well beyond that right now. He has 20 of them. Interesting on that. The top three list includes Johnny Cueto and then two Atlanta Brave pitchers. Santiago two away. Julio Tehran is one of those and the other is a former Red Aaron Harag. Who would have ever thought that you make a leaderboard of the the most quality starts in the National League this year? Here we are in the first week of August. That Aaron Harang, who was kind of picked up on a whim by the by the Atlanta Braves, would be second on the list, second only behind Johnny Cueto. Now you can say what you want about quality starts, and it's still a 4.75 run run average. It's six innings, three runs or less, but still that shows you a certain measure of consistency that. That these guys do to be able to go out there and do that. 19 of them for Harang. He's only one behind Cueto, but Cueto's got 21 if you count tonight. Boy, talking about making it easy for Cueto in the eighth. A uh, quick inning, 104 pitches. Johnny has a one, two, three. Ohio has been brought to you by Chevy. Visit your tri state Chevy dealer today. And by Cincinnati Children's Hospital, ranks third in the country on the United States News and World Reports 2014 Best Children's Hospitals. As promised, time for our Miller Time moment. We mentioned the great rivalry between the Reds and the Indians. Let's go back to 1997. Al Morris scores for the Reds. And the first interleague game, Deion Sanders was in that lineup, Chris. Some memories of some special times. Well, Brett those Tomko the, with a strikeout. Those were the Deion design uniforms <laughs> yeah, that the right. Reds had, remember? Reds won that one four to one. Overall, the Indians have won 45 and the Reds 41 in this interleague series in the battle for the Ohio Cup. I think you got to bring those unis back. At least for a weekend. I'm sure they will at some point in time. I mean, they had a little like a little Star Trek effect to them. Jay Bruce, big swing, going back. 
It is gone. Home run number 11 for JB. The Beaumont Bomber delivers. And a young man in a nice red shirt will have a souvenir. Well, talk about bouncing back. A three hit game for the Beaumont Bomber. And Jay picks up home run number 11, run batted in number 45 on the season. Yeah, he might be turning the corner, Chris. Well, you know, we began to see a little bit of something down in Miami, George, when he started hitting the ball the other way, like on a hit and run. It could have been a hit and run that got him going in the very first place. But getting the bat through the zone right there, a little better bat path as that ball goes right into the sweet spot of that bat. And... Jay Bruce picks up a home run. The Reds have two long balls on the night. Eleven round trippers for Bruce, and here's Frazier. Hit by a pitch, scored in the first. Robbed of a hit and a nice play by Tomlin back through the middle in the second. Flied out and bounced out. He feels better about himself and you know the Reds feel better about the seven spot on the board. It's funny before the game today Rick Stowe had a great group visiting a group of seminarians. That about three quarters of whom were Reds fans. And they said they would be in charge of the runs tonight and they said they'd get seven. <laughs> well you know something they're right on right now. <laughs> A blue pit for Frazier. Even though it's a short plane flight, it makes a plane flight better if you put up numbers like this. 12 hits now for the Reds. 7, 12, and 0 for Cincinnati. 2, 5, and 1 for the Indians. Here's Ludwig. He got it all started with a double. And on the play after an error by the third baseman, the Reds' first run scored in the first. Aren't these two games almost exactly alike, but the winners are different? <laughs> Flip flop. I mean, the you know, Kluber handled the Reds last night. The Reds did not look good. Their manager came out in the press and said, you know, get your heads in the game. Tonight, exact opposite. Cueto goes out and dominates, and Terry Francona will probably be plagiarizing. Brian Price's speech from last night saying hey get your heads in the game had a guy picked off third base on a ball Yeah, it was a confusing play with the ball that came out of the bullpen But a Two plan nonetheless And may have cost him a chance to get back in this game the few chances that they've had to to get anything going against Cueto Balls two strikes to Ludwig that's a base hit in the left center field. Well, three straight hits for the Reds. Just Carrasco may have reached the end of the line here in the ninth. They're trying to get him through the inning. Pitch four innings. And a lengthy 50 pitch outing to this point. And they're getting action up in the bullpen. There's Heisey struck out, walked, singled, and bounced out. Breaking ball drops in for a strike. And the rain that came down for half an inning now is stopped again. He got him for out number one of the ninth inning. Oh, 
Well, our phantom cam look. Remember, this is 5,000 frames per second. Watch the bat wobble. You want to take your hand off of that baby because when you get on the end of the bat like that, I mean, he barely got anything on that ball, but just enough to get it over the head of the shortstop. That's a base hit. That's a great shot, isn't it? That camera is unbelievable. And for you as a pitching instructor, boy, how valuable is that for mechanics? I just can't afford to to use one. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse can find a way to get sneak it to you. He might have one in his trunk. Everything else is there. Here's Brian. Pena struck out but reached on a wild pitch in the second. And later scored on the homer the three run shot by Santiago in the second that gave the Reds a 4 1 lead. He bounced out, singled, and walked in his other plate appearances. And maybe his biggest contribution of the night came after Johnny Cueto went 3 0 on two straight batters and he went out and gave him some marching orders, get his head back in the game. Yeah, you know, Chris, there's so many aspects to a new player reaching a new team. And Brian came over from the American League, came over from Detroit last year. Here's Carrasco's delivery. And it's probably most difficult for a catcher who not only has to come to a new team, but he's got to learn each and every individual pitcher and get those pitchers to believe in him. And he's done a remarkable job of doing that. Well, he has, especially when early on, the uh, you had Mesoraco go on to the disabled list and he was forced into playing a lot of baseball. Boy, they're finding some holes tonight. Base is loaded for the Reds on a base hit by Pena. Well, he's never met a stranger, a stranger, Brian Pena. Has. No, I mean, this right. guy is so outgoing and he's so friendly, he's smiling all the time. And if anybody doesn't like him, he just disarms him with the smile. Now here comes. Terry Francona, that'll be it for Carrasco. Give him credit. He 58 pitch effort. Four innings of work, but he's run out of gas here in the ninth. And while the pitching change takes place, we'll take time out for these messages. You're watching Reds Baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. Hanson Reds fan and those that are sitting and at the same time you know which dugout is dancing too. Billy Hamilton enjoying a night where the Reds have piled up 14 hits and seven runs and lead it seven to two. Ah, wonderful game isn't it Chris. Well when things are going your way it's certainly a wonderful game and I'm sure that Tito Francona has got Maybe an exception to that when you would say wonderful game. Brian Price likes it. Third pitcher of the night for the Indians, Kyle Crockett. 25 games now for Kyle. Taken by the Indians in the 2013 draft. So he was pitching for University of Virginia. 
just a little more than a year ago when they picked him up. Tander has shown some pretty good control actually with 19 innings pitch as a rookie he's only walked six batters struck out 16. He's facing Chris Negron. In the air to right this will get at the very least a run in back to the wall it's going to be over Murphy's head. One run scores two run scores they're going to send Pena here comes the throw to the plate and he's going to be out. And he's saying. He Check it. The tag. He said he never tagged me and he got his hand on the plate. We'll see if Brian Price will do exactly that. The well, two more runs score at the least and it's nine to two. On a double by Negron and he winds up a third on the throw to the plate. They may give him a triple on that George. Here's the throw that goes into the plate. We're going to see kind of an oddball slide by. Pena doesn't touch the plate and then does get his hand in there. That's going to be something that they'll take a long look at, I think, to make sure. Because when he goes in first with his foot, he goes right over the dish, doesn't get it down in time. But then the swipe tag misses. There he gets his hand in, I think, ahead of the tag. He might be exactly right on the button. I think they're going to call him safe. It is something now though with the replay in, in is the main rule that the runner in question jumps up and looks into the dugout instead of looking back at the umpire. So well, they will he asked Brian Price do you want to challenge it Price said yes so he is using his challenge. I mean the Reds really can't lose either way. They get two runs, they lead it 9 2. If he's out, it's two outs. If not, you know, this is kind of like going to arbitration. For a <laughs> you player, can't lose. It? You can't you lose. You don't lose. Another look from this angle. Never touches him there, and is the hand in before he is touched. Uh, Pena will argue that he got the hand in. We'll see if they have a conclusive view back in New York. This umpiring crew, by the way, Jerry Davis, the crew chief on the right, Greg Gibson on the left, will follow the Reds and the Indians back to Cincinnati. The uniqueness of this two game, two game series, this crew will stay with these two teams. Is he electric or what? Isn't he, Chris? No, I mean, we were the, just talking about it. Smile you know, or something no, else. He had no difficulty at all, really <laughs> coming in here and becoming part of this team. And he's become some of the main fiber of this ball club. Everybody leads in different ways, and he's been a part of the leadership quotient of this club. <laughs> they, Crockett said he wanted a new baseball and. Gibson toss went over his head and they finally do get it to him. Really meanwhile what's lost in this whole review is the fact that Christopher Negron has shown some pretty good opposite field power. Picked up his second hit that ball was walloped over the head of the right fielder. I would be inclined to give him a triple on that because he wasn't stopping no matter what. Still have made no indication of whether it is a double or a triple. I think just like we're suspecting Chris they they're looking for that perfect view and we don't have the perfect view do they have it in New York. Well we have a, enough of a view to give the Reds a benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. But you have to find to overturn it there has to be conclusive evidence. If they go this long you're almost wondering if it's they don't have enough conclusive evidence to overturn it. We'll see. Looks like Jerry's just about wrapping up. No, they didn't have enough evidence. Pena will argue to his dying day that he got in there. <laughs> the call will stand. <laughs> I was set up. <laughs> call stands. The out is the second out of the inning. 
wonder if that's anybody's Twitter handle. Maybe <laughs> Jim Day would know that. At call stands. That's probably gone by now. <laughs> Might have been before that. So the Reds play two more and lead it nine to two. And here's Cozart. He's contributed tonight a triple and then later scored on a base hit. They will score at a double. He goes to third on the throat of the plate. So a single and a double. And. Two other hard hit balls for Negron. He had a fine night and two fine defensive plays too. Swing and a miss by Cozart. One ball two strikes. After being shackled by Corey Kluber last night the Reds explode for 15 hits the second 15 hit effort of the week for the Reds at 15 hits down in Miami. And this was a power laden 15 here tonight. Jay Bruce's homer is 11th of the year. Ramon Santiago his first of the year. A three run shot from Ramon gave the Reds all the space they needed back in the second to give him a four to one lead. There's so many beautiful parts of this game and one of them is after a night like last night Chris you don't have to wait a week. <laughs> you play the next day. You can turn a frown into a smile pretty fast. Now, unless you're a starting pitcher. Mm -hmm. Santana under it. He's got it. That'll do it. But the Reds take a nine to two lead to the bottom of nine in Cleveland. Jay Bruce, number 11, sends him off with this round. Chris, Johnny be good on this night, huh? Well, Johnny was good, really, right from the get-go. They did score a run off of Johnny Cueto in the first inning, but that's about all they could really muster. They didn't ever had much going on when he needed the extra gas. He reached back and had it. And as Johnny Cueto usually does, takes care of business on the mound. The Reds gave him some run support tonight, and that was our Mazda pitch by pitch. Eight innings, five hits. Two earned runs, a couple of walks, and five strikeouts facing Carlos Santana here in the ninth. A they walk, probably, a fly ball out, and a ground out for Santana. And they probably asked Johnny, I mean, do you want to go back out there for the ninth, or do you want us to finish the game off for you? Make a play, George. And I Close, think he, we almost got one. And I think that Johnny obviously wants to get back out there and complete another ball game. 
your pitcher. CGs look good, don't they? Well, they do, but they're a thing of the past. Yep. I mean, you know, it used to be that long time ago that you know pitchers just took a lot of pride in finishing what they started. Now, you know, managers have seven or eight pitchers in the bullpen at their disposal. They used to have three or four. Right into the shift, Negron has it. Santana retired, and the shift has been kind to the Reds tonight. Offensively, they've succeeded against it, and defensively, that results in a 4 3 put out, first out of the ninth inning. And here comes Chisenhall, two ground balls to second, and a walk for Lonnie. Reds head home to take on these Indians for two more. Hope you're with us tomorrow. Reds live at 6 30. Matt Latos against Danny Salazar. And Homer Bailey against TJ House on Thursday. That's a foul ball down the first baseline. Your evaluation of Matt and his last start down in Miami, Chris. Guy's a battler. There's yep. no question about that. I mean, the guy is a very important piece of this puzzle that the Reds have. And I expect him to go out there and pitch the way Johnny Cueto does because Matt Latos feels like he should pitch the way Johnny Cueto does. And he's capable. 0 oh and 2. Slap the other way, foul. I mean, the bar of expectation now for every one of these starters is just about the same. Whether it's fair or not, but I mean, the Reds in their first three games down in Miami, their starter pitchers went seven innings of one run baseball. Each of them. And then Leak gave up. Leak still won one run baseball, but I think he only went six innings. So a little bit of a, a bump in the road yesterday with Alfredo Simon, but Cueto comes right back. And he wants his complete game down to his final out, a strikeout of Chisholm Hall, strikeout number six for Cueto. Well, that will give him four on the season for Johnny Cueto. Who's leading the league now? Uh, Who would you think? That would be Clayton Kershaw. And it's harder and harder. You know, the one thing we don't talk about with complete games, George, it's harder to get them nowadays because managers are under pressure to take a pitcher out once he gets to about 110, 115, certainly 120 pitches. I mean, back when guys were spinning up, you know, 10 to 15 complete games a year, sometimes more than that, they were throwing 150 pitches out there. One ball, two strikes. Cueto trying to close it out against David Murphy. One for three for Murphy. Bouncer to the right side. Who's going to get there? They don't get it there in time. Murphy beats the throw by Negron, and it's an infield hit for Murphy. And take another look. Now Brian Price is going to walk out. They're going to take a look at the. The video anyway, just in case, right here. And why not? If you get him out, Quater doesn't have to throw another pitch. And I think just to speed things up, what happened there was Jerry Davis says, "Come on, we're going to review it." He just got the bat on it off the plate in the high hopper. Negron had to wait for it to come down, and we'll have another review. This shouldn't take as long because it's not as complicated a play as that touch tag play at the plate with Brian Pena. I thought he was safe in real yeah. time. I can't really tell. Oh, maybe not. A 
right there. Well, it's the, not on the bag. Yeah, yet. when the ball's in the back of the glove. That's what they define that as a catch being made. This may be just the the last out of the ball game, and we're going to see an out sign by the umpire, and everybody's going to get up and head to the cars. Umpire review after Brian Price went out to ask him to check it. Certainly a weird way to end the game. Let's hope <laughs> it happens like that, though. I haven't seen that yet this Not year. Not often it happens. Jerry Davis talking to New York. They're probably all hoping for the same thing. Yep. <laughs> To get the call right. That's what I mean, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, no matter which way you look at it, this has been a superb night for Johnny Cueto. He's allowed only five hits to this point. He's been outstanding in a 9 2 lead for the Reds, two earned runs. And for the Reds, they've put on an offensive show that. Got them back on track. Davis. He's out. So. Okay. No matter how you review it. Johnny Cueto was superb on this night. Johnny be good. He stretches his record to 6 and 0 against the Indians. His fourth complete game of the season. And gets some help from his battery mate. Brian Pena. Your report card on Johnny be good pretty good tonight Chris it's an a George he broke a one game losing streak he proved himself to be the stopper the tenth career complete game the fourth of this year puts him in second place behind Kershaw and the Reds split the series here in Cleveland pretty good road trip so far going three out of four in Miami one out of two here in Cleveland and they'll take on the Indians going back home and just the way we like it that's uh, good to see the men. From Cincinnati with some smiles on their faces and they'll head to the airport to head back home with a victory here nine to two to even this series two games coming up for Jay Bruce his 11th home run and a night where he wound up with three hits on the evening two singles and the home run a big home run from Ramon Santiago to make it four one a three run shot in the second got the Reds rolling and Johnny Cueto took it from then coming up next Reds live presented by Performance Kings Honda Reds win it nine two.